sales and marketing professionals, so you're thinking about starting a manufacturing blog. Don't do it. Just kidding, I couldn't agree more. I think it's one of the best steps you could take for your marketing. One, it's gonna help you to pull in and attract really high quality visitors to your website. And two, you're gonna be helping your prospects along the way. It's a complete win-win. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through 10 steps to making sure that your brand new manufacturing blog starts off on the right foot. Number one, blog platform. While I really don't think that this is the number one most important aspect in the 10 steps of setting up your company's first manufacturing blog, I know many of you are gonna jump into this right away, so I wanted to address this first. We recommend HubSpot or WordPress, and most of our clients do use HubSpot. We also use HubSpot. It's a fantastic, uh, very intuitive, step-by-step -step blogging platform. WordPress, especially if you can combine it with some of the very popular uh, plugins that help with search engine optimization and other things, are also is also a good solution. Um, but if we had to pick one, it would be HubSpot. The other consideration to have with your blog is to make sure it's on your domain. So for example, our blog is protocol80.com slash blog. And that would, that's perfectly acceptable. Blog.protocol80.com would also be acceptable. What you do not want to have is somebody else's domain slash your company name blog. So don't set up a free WordPress blog on the wordpress.org website and have your blog live there. Reason being, as you gain inbound links, which are very, very helpful for search engine optimization and things, you're really building inbound links for wordpress.org, not your company website.com. So you really want your blog to live on your domain. Okay, number two, you want to establish some metrics and benchmarks so that you can set goals for at least three months out or what you want to accomplish. Some of these metrics might be views, some of them might be increases in visibility in, in search engines, but you have to get clarity around where you're starting to understand if you're improving and set targets that you're trying to aim for. One thing I will encourage you to do, if this is a brand new blog and you really don't get much website traffic, is be very conservative with your goals. And in fact, I'm probably going to encourage you to kind of uh, keep your eyes off the data for at least the first couple months as long as you're staying consistent with blogging. Okay, number three, you have to set up and create your buyer persona. If you check out the description below this video, there will be a link to a free guide that'll walk you through establishing your buyer personas, including doing some research and interviews with past buyers, current buyers, to understand what really makes them tick. What do they wanna see on your blog? Don't write about yourself. Your main website pages probably already cover that. So, do some research, establish your buyer personas. All right, number four. Establishing your buyer journey for each of your buyer personas. If you're just starting with your blog, you don't have a buyer persona yet, I would start with one and then figure out the buyer journey for that specific persona. So what do they do in their awareness stage? What do they do in consideration stage? What do they do in decision stage? What information do they need? And you can be the provider of that through your blog. If this is a brand new blog, as I'm assuming it is, you wanna really focus on the awareness stage and consideration stage and then leverage your website Website, which is already heavily about you and why a uh, prospect should go with you. Um, so you really want to focus on awareness stage, consideration stage with your blog posts, especially up front because you're probably missing that right now. Number five, make sure you take your sales team out to lunch, probably not McDonald's, doesn't have to be steak, but something decent, and really drill them with questions. What are the common things that they hear from prospects on the phone? What are their considerations? What are they thinking about? What are the problems that they're having? What are the specifics of those problems? And can you write content around those? Because if they're asking your salespeople, they're already hopping online and searching around those problems and questions anyways. That's a gold mine of information for your new blog. Okay, number six, compile all of this research, your buyer personas, your buyer journey, the sales conversations or the conversations you've had with salespeople. Put it all together and start creating a list of topics. They don't have to be perfect right now. What we wanna do is create some themes. What are some of the common questions or common problems that we know we can write a wealth of content around? Then we wanna kind of prioritize that list and see which ones we think we can knock out in one quarter and establish a cadence of at least one blog post a week. So we're gonna create titles at the very least for at least one blog post a week for a quarter. If you can do two, even better. Three, mm, I would love that, but at least one per week for one quarter. So we're talking 90 days of blogging. Really keep in mind what this potential prospect 
might be thinking when they hit Google? What is their search intent? Are they trying to answer a question? Are they comparing uh, maybe a couple materials if you're a manufacturer? Are they um, curious about um, the best process to use? Really try and understand what intent they have when they search and use that intent in your title. And also make sure that these blog posts are pure education. Your website pages are all about you and they tend to really promote how great you are as a company, as a manufacturer, your history, and your experience. This needs to be pure education. Remember, if we're talking about the awareness stage and the consideration stage, we really wanna provide education, not a sales pitch. Number seven, so you've written a blog post. Now it's time to spread the word. So it's not gonna be found in Google right away. You may put it on the homepage of your website, a link to it, so people there might find it. But really, you need to focus on social channels and email. Don't have an email marketing platform? HubSpot is a great tool to send email campaigns. There's also free tools like MailChimp that will work. Um, the idea here is you wanna take past customers, maybe even prospects that have opted in and given you permission to send them information, and take that once a week opportunity to just send them your educational content. You're gonna get more eyes on the content. It could help past customers reinvigorate them into you know, becoming a customer again. And then in social media, you wanna make sure that using all of the platforms that you're on, so maybe Facebook, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, promote the fact that you have some new content. And you don't have to do this just once. I would recommend uh, feeling it out, maybe doing it a couple times a week, promote it at first, but get some eyes on this content using other channels aside from Google. If you happen to have mentioned anybody else or any other organization in your blog post, be sure to tag them in social, get their attention, and maybe they'll share it and get some additional eyes on your content. So speaking of tagging others, number eight, if you have an opportunity in your content to link to a non-competitive website, so somebody who doesn't compete with you but maybe has a great source of information and you can link to that, do it. Over time, you know, it may not be immediate, they're gonna notice and hopefully they'll reciprocate at some point and link back to you. That's always a plus and helps with search engine optimization. So number nine, I've already alluded to this, but it's really, really important that you stay consistent with pu publishing at least one blog post a week on your blog and you avoid the data for at least the first couple months with a brand new blog. Because if you don't, you're going to be frustrated. You have to understand that blogging is a compounding thing. So over time, as you write more and more blog posts, some of them are gonna rank really well, some of them aren't. And you have to be willing to accept that, but understand that the ones that do rank really well in search and really get high visibility, they're gonna be key drivers of prospects uh, for your sales folks over time, especially if you're using inbound marketing. Number 10. As the quarter's winding down, it's really important that you take a look at the data. Now it's okay, it's still probably gonna be painful and you may even feel a little let down, especially only after one quarter of blogging. Um, but it's important to take a look at the data and see what performed best. Okay, what blog posts throughout that quarter had the most views? Uh, were any of them shared in social media? What were some of the positives and can you do more of that? So take those topics and those types of topics and apply them to maybe a different material at your manufacturing company or a different process um, or a different type of question that you know a prospect might ask and duplicate your effort in the next quarter. So shift gears a little bit. The ones that didn't perform real well, maybe change the title. You know, try changing the title, reread it from your buyer personas perspective and see, is this really valuable? Um, did I consider the persona's search intent when I wrote the title for this? And give it another shot, maybe adjust it a little bit. I would not probably re-email it to your um, list, but you could re-promote it in social and see what happens and keep an eye on it for the next quarter. And you also need, it's time to use all of this data to understand what you need to schedule for at least one blog post a week for quarter two. So that's been 10 steps to make sure that your brand new marketing blog starts off on the right foot. Again, there's resources in the description below that are gonna help you with your buyer persona, with blogging, with SEO, etc. Free resources you can download right from our website. Um, and if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe below. Thanks.